Hello, everyone. In this video, we'll do the current affairs from 11th April to 20th of April. So let's get started. So Shahbaz Sharif has been elected as the 23rd Prime Minister of Pakistan. Pakistan's opposition leader, Shahbaz Sharif, has been elected unopposed as the 23rd Prime Minister of the country through voting in the National Assembly. And uh, the 70-year-old Pakistan Muslim League chief will succeed Imran Khan. So we all know students that... Um, you know, Imran Khan has been removed by a no trust vote recently in the National Assembly. And uh, now he'll be succeeded uh, by uh, Shahbaz Sharif, who is the chief of Pakistan Muslim League students, right? And um, Shahbaz Sharif is the brother of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. Also, he served as the chief minister of the country's most populous and politically crucial Punjab province prize. So, a change of leadership in Pakistan. Moving on, veteran Bengali author Amar Mitra wins prestigious O. Henry Award students. So veteran Bengali author Amar Mitra was awarded this year O. Henry Prize for short story he wrote 40 years back. And uh, he backed the award for his short story titled Gone Buru. That's a Bengali short fiction. And uh, this was translated into English. Uh, it was titled The Old Man of Kusumpur earlier. And uh, this work was, in fact, published in an American magazine in 2020, and he was awarded uh, the Saite Academy Award in 2006. Pitra was born in Kolkata, and he's a well-known writer of Bengali literature. And uh, he spent some of his childhood in districts of Bengal, and that has been, in fact, the background of most of his story students. Moving on, Faguni Nair has been crowned as the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year Award 2021. So uh, this was the 23rd edition of the EY Entrepreneur of the Year India Awards. And uh, Faguri Nair students, we all know she's the founder and CEO of um, beauty supply company, Nika. And we know that how she's been uh, touted as the principal reason why, uh, I mean, behind Nika's success. And uh, she will now represent India at the EY World Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Uh, in June at Monaco. And uh, the lifetime achievement was given to AM Nayak students. He's the group chairman of Larson and Tubro. If we talk about the EY Entrepreneur of the Year Award students, these awards recognize the entrepreneurs who with their innovation, resilience, and boldness are positively impacting lives of millions. And it is the only global business world program, business award program, sorry, um, that is celebrated across 60 countries. Next students, Swanidhi Se Samriddhi, introduced by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. So Sri Manoj Joshi, Secretary, Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, has launched Swanidhi Se Samriddhi program students. So basically, uh, this has been, this was already there, this particular scheme. It's been expanded to additional 126 cities across 14 states and union territory students. So this is... PM Swanidhi's extra initiative. So there's a scheme called PM Swanidhi and an extra initiative to that is Swanidhi Say Samriddhi students. So PM Swanidhi students, uh, this is basically an initiative that supports the street vendors. It provides uh, working capital financial assistance to them students. And this is an extra initiative to that and it covers around 35 lakh street vendors and their families and they've been given, uh, you know, uh, insurance benefits under Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana and Jeevan Yoti Yojana and other such schemes. And uh, the initiatives as envisioned by the Prime Minister aims not only to provide loans to street sellers, but also to help them develop holistically and economically. With this in mind, uh, this program was established to provide social security benefits to street sellers. So basically, we have PM Swanidhi, which was to provide working capital financial assistance to the street vendors. This is an extra initiative that aims at their overall development and therefore uh, covers them under uh, various social economic upliftment schemes and social um, and security benefits. Next students, PM Narendra Modi has been honored with the first late Dinanath Mangeshkar Award. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be honored with the inaugural Lata Dinanath Mangeshkar Award. 
which is instituted in the memory of veteran singer Lata Mangeshkar. And the first such award would be, um, you know, um, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be honored with it. And he would receive the award for selfless service to the nation and society. And uh, this award ceremony, now, of course, uh, it is already uh, held April 24th. And it marks the 80th death anniversary of uh, Master Dinanath Mangeshkar, the uh, father of uh, Lata Mangeshkar. And uh, among other uh, awardees, we have uh, singer Rahul Deshpande and we have a uh, uh, veteran actress Asha Parekh, actor Jackie Shroff, and uh, very interestingly, the Mumbai Dabbawala students would be represented by Nutan Tiffin suppliers. Next students, World Trade Organization cuts global trade growth forecast to 3% in 20, 2022. So World Trade Organization has downward revised its projection for global trade. That means the global trade is going to get further uh, you know, reduced or um, would further slow down in the year 2022 to about 3% students. And this was in fact estimated at 4.7% earlier uh, when the world was just about to recover from the impact of uh, Indochina, uh, sorry, US-China trade war. Uh, but now given the Ukraine-Russia crisis, the WTO has, again, downward revised its projection from 47 to 3% students. And uh, like it's written, the downward erosion follows the Russia-Ukraine conflict that has impacted commodity prices and disrupted supplies and intensified geopolitical and economic uncertainty students. And uh, the merchandise trade volume growth is projected at 3.4% students, right? That means merchandise trade, the trade in the visibles, the in the not in the services, the goods basically. And um, in the longer term, the WTO said that the conflict could even trigger the disintegration of the global economy into separate blocks. And uh, India's real GDP in such a scenario would falter by 9%, China's by 7%, Russia by as much as 10%. So this is going to be the negative impact of uh, you know, uh, all these events on these countries. So very quickly, students, World Trade Organization, and we all know it's headquartered in Geneva. Please keep it in mind. A lot of uh, exams, uh, the other management entrance test, uh, non-CAT test, basically. They ask you questions on this, so you should know that it is headquartered in Geneva and it's founded in 1995. And Director General is uh, Director General is Nagozi Okonjo Ibiala. Next students, Microsoft and BPCL have collaborated to set up digital transformation. So Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, which is an Indian oil refinery, it has teamed with Microsoft to improve its customer experience. And um, it will also integrate cloud computing and artificial intelligence to help the oil and gas business adapt digitally. So basically, uh, BPCL has uh, teamed with Microsoft to you know, sort of improve on its um, digital uh, architecture and it wants to leverage and capitalize on the cloud computing capabilities of Microsoft. So Microsoft will supply BPCL with infrastructure as a service, platform as a service and cloud network and security services over the course of the seven year partnership. So uh, BPCL plans to employ Microsoft secure cloud platform to accelerate its cloud transformation, create smarter supply chains and improve customer engagement. So here we see students that uh, increasing number of companies are making use of latest technologies like um, artificial intelligence and uh, like in this case, cloud computing to have smarter and more efficient supply chains and uh, to provide customers with better experience. And uh, the two companies will work together to create a digital experience for BPCL consumers to reaffirm BPCL's brand promise of quality and trust and to develop Urja, which is a conversational AI artificial intelligence platform that will provide 24 seven customer care. So how, you know, we can see how AI and all the digital technologies are being used to provide better services to the customers and thereby enhance the competitiveness and the performance of the companies. So very quickly, students, Microsoft founder Bill Gates and Paul Allen, CEO Satya Nadella, he's an Indian. And uh, it's founded, uh, it was founded in uh, New Mexico, United States and headquartered in Redmond, Washington, United States. 
And if you talk about BPCL, it's headquartered in Mumbai and it is uh, head, the chairman is Arun Kumar Singh. Next students, Vikram Dev that named as Air India Asset Holding CMD. Students, please keep it in mind, he's not named as the CMD of Air India, but uh, the CMD of Air India Asset Holding, right? So basically Air India Asset Holding, AIAHL, was set up in 2019 by the government for holding debt and non-core assets of the Air India Group students, right? So this, this, this uh, holding was specifically set up to um, take care of the debt and non-core assets of the Air India students. We all know that Air India was sold to uh, the Tata Group at uh, rupees 18,000 crores by the government of India. And uh, <clears throat> so Vikram, Dutt, Vikram Dev that he's going to be uh, the CMD of this company students. He's in the rank of A of additional secretary of the government of India. He's basically an IS officer of the AGMUT cadre. Moving on, Lieutenant General Manoj Pandey has been named as the India's next chief of army staff. So Lieutenant General Manoj Pandey students, please keep the name in mind. He's been appointed as the next chief of army staff. And uh, he of course would <clears throat> take over from General M.M. Naravne, who is said to retire on April 22, <clears throat> April 30, 2022. And uh, Lieutenant General Manoj Pandey is the first ever officer from the Corps of Engineers to be appointed as Army Chief Student. So very interestingly, he's from the uh, Corps of Engineers. So usually you have people from the infantry going on to become, you know, people in core military roles going on to become um, the head, head of uh, army. But this is the first time that you have somebody from the engineer's background to, to be appointed as uh, the Lieutenant General. And he served as chief engineer in the UN mission in Ethiopia and Eritrea. He was commander in chief Andaman and Nicobar command. And um, outgoing army chief General M.M. Naravne, he's seen as the front runner for the chief of defense staff. So we all know students that the CDS position is lying vacant ever since um, uh, General Bipin Rawat uh, expired in an air crash. So now M.M. Naravne is seen as the front runner for that post student. So in all probabilities, he would be appointed to that post. Next students, United Nations reports suggested COVID plunged 77 million into poverty prior Ukraine wars. So there's this study by the United Nations, wherein it said that the pandemic has pushed 77 million additional people into severe poverty. And uh, many developing nations are unable to recover due to heavy cost of loan repayments. And this, uh, this situation has been exacerbated. It has been worsened by the extra burden of the crisis in Ukraine students. So while the country was still, as the countries were still um, you know, struggling to recover from the impact of the COVID, the extra burden of the crisis in the Ukraine has um, worsened the situation for them. And according to the research, rich countries might use historic amount of money borrowed at ultra low interest rates to help them recover from epidemic slums. So there are epidemic slums and a lot of borrowing will have to be done at ultra low interest rate students. And the poorest countries on the other hand, spend billions of dollars servicing their debts and face considerably higher borrowing costs, uh, prohibiting them from investing in education and healthcare. So basically uh, they're going to use their resources to help them recover from debt. And this is going to negatively impact all the socioeconomic services like education and healthcare and uh, environmental um, you know, protection and inequality reduction. So that means the poorest of the poor countries are going to be the worst hit from both the pandemic and the Russia-Ukraine war students. So the UN report, it says that according to the United Nations, 812 million people lived in severe poverty on dollar 1.90 per day or less in 2019 by 2021. The figure had climbed to 889 million due to the pandemic students. You can um, you know, in fact, uh, note down these statistics if you want. If there's anything, any um, topic in the uh, on the VAT or the GD wherein you are asked to discuss something related to the pandemic, its negative impact, the inequality in the world. So you can cite these figures at this, and these are from a credible uh, source students. That's the United Nations. Those figures are from United Nations. So you might as well use them. And the report focuses on funding to accomplish the United Nations 2030 development goals, which include eradicating poverty, 
providing high quality education to all young people and attaining gender equality. So we all know we have these Sustainable Development Goals, SDG, that the world is supposed to achieve by 2030. But given this, the negative back-to-back -back impact of COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war, and there's still a long way to go, uh, uh, you know, till 2030. So uh, certainly it's going to, it has already obstructed uh, the march towards the achievement of sustainable development goals. And um, it would further slow, slow it down, basically slow down the progress. So if you talk about the Ukraine-Russia war, global impact students, so the war in Ukraine has had a global impact. According to the UN report, the war in Ukraine has put 1.7 billion people at risk of rising food, energy, and fertilizer cost, right? Even after absorbing the impact of Russia's war in Ukraine, the projections say that the GDP per capita in 20% of developing countries will not return, return to pre-2019 levels by the end of 2023. And the poorest developing countries pay 14% of their revenue in debt interest students. And of course, because of that, they, they will have to cut their budgets for education, infrastructure, and capital spending. And uh, the rich, in fact, would be less impacted uh, by merely 3.5%. But like I said, the poorest countries would be worst hit. And uh, the war in Ukraine will worsen these issues as well as bring higher energy and commodity prices to them. So the world might see the upward spiraling of the um, energy and commodity prices students, oil prices principally. And whenever we see a surge in the oil prices that has, uh, that has a, like an impact that impacts the inflation everywhere students. So inflation goes up. Inflation is intricately related with the oil prices students. So we, see, we would see that uh, happening. And of course, the supply chain disruptions and uh, financial market volatility. Next students, World Bank cuts global economic growth forecast to 3.2%. So the World Bank has lowered the global growth forecast for 2022 to 3.2%. And it was estimated at 4.1% earlier. And the downward revision is due to the impact of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on the global economy. So we already know that um, I just discussed that WTO has downward revised the projections for the world trade. And here we see that the World Bank has cut global economic growth forecast to 3.2% students. And the reason for lowering the projection is that people are facing reduced commercial activity and trade and the debt crisis and the currency depreciation have placed a heavy burden on the poor students. There are going to be reversals in education, health and gender equality also. So that's all for this video, students. I'll see you very soon with another video. Thank you so much.